<laughs> Didn't realize you guys could hear me. <laughs> I'm eating banana bread. <laughs> Hang on. Hey, <laughs> that's funny. I'm seeing the chat like starting to show up. And uh, who is it that mentioned something first? Elijah on Facebook said, uh, always like a good chew. And I'm thinking, can they hear me eating? <laughs> yes, some a uh, little bit uh, banana bread breakfast here before we get started. Oof, that's also too loud. Good morning, guys. Merry Christmas, uh, Patrick. I posted on Facebook, but I didn't post anything on YouTube. On Christmas Day, about. Bishop asks, how much time did you spend prepping for this live build? Well, uh, I mean, as far as perfect grades go, I mean, the prep so far hasn't taken that long. It's a lot of parts, but I feel like, I don't know. It hasn't taken that long, I think, uh, as, as long as I expected. But that said, I only have the parts all totally prepped for today. Uh, the rest of the parts for phases three and four, which is basically phase three is just like all the truss parts adding onto the frame. And then phase four is all the exterior armor. Those parts are all cut off of the runner and everything, but I haven't removed all the nubs and everything on those. So that I'm going to be working on like tonight and tomorrow. And so I think uh, it's Monday morning here. Uh, two days later on Wednesday morning is when I'm planning on having the second part of the stream because uh, the rest of the parts aren't ready yet, but kind of. So it took a while, of course, just to get all the parts off the runners, but the um, what made it a little bit faster than maybe other any other Gundam was that like the RX-782 is such a familiar design. Like I know, like just looking at the parts in the runner, I know what... what parts of the Gundam, therefore, it's easy to cut the, cut everything off and have it all separated. Um, but also, uh, because if you guys saw in my unboxing video, and if you've seen any other unboxing videos or any other like coverage of the kit so far, you've probably seen that uh, uh, the runners like have the little label on there. Uh, like it, like uh, on the runner, it's like uh, with the Mega Size kits, there's a little label there on the runner that shows like all the parts on this part of the runner are all going for the arm or the leg or whatever. So it's organized in a way that makes cutting the parts off the runner uh, faster than usual for a perfect grade kit, I think. So. Uh, Rodri, phase one through five, it wouldn't take that long. If I had the parts all prepared ahead of time just to do the full build in a single live stream, you know, it would be Four or five hours, maybe, yeah. But I don't think it would take like all day. Mm, yes, uh, Reiji, like, uh, like with entry grade or 30 minutes missions, yes, the parts are separated kind of on the runner by a section, but uh, with this, they're even like labeled. There's even a label so you even know exactly which parts they go for. Um, honestly, it's it seems kind of useless, uh, to be honest. Uh, Boom Cannon there was mentioning, I hope they uh, label parts of the runners more. I mean, it's kind of cool. It's basically just like Bandai kind of flexing. It's really unnecessary. Uh, but it's, I mean, if you can do it, I guess, cool. Why not? Alright. Let's get started. It was kind of difficult to decide how to separate the process as well too, whether I wanted to do phases one, two, and three, because phases three is also, god dang. How is the YouTube video just start playing 
My phone is in my pocket. How'd that happen? An AK Interactive Weathering Pencils review. That's... I wasn't even watching that earlier. How did that come up? That was weird. I've just started the live stream and already... Already the... Uh, I can see the... YouTube has set it to limited monetization. I have to request a review on it already. That's cool. Hmm. It happens with all of my live streams. I don't know why, but... I always have to request a review on them. They get the old classic yellow dollar sign. Limited monetization on there. Uh, Greg, you're building it now. Yeah, Greg, I, I'd seen uh, you mentioning about that, Greg, in uh, the Discord, but I haven't, I've been just busy this morning. I haven't uh, checked it closely, but I did see you talking about that, yes. Just got done with phase one of the legs. All right, I'll be following close behind you, I suppose, then. Uh, Shinanju Requiem, yes, it did come out already. Alright. Let's get going. So yeah, I, I was uh, trying to decide how I wanted to separate the build, do phase one, two, and three, or do like phase one and two in a one live stream, phase three in like a really short live stream, because phase three is just the adding the trust parts to the frame it would be probably less than an hour, I'm sure. Uh, and then phase four, I have like three live streams, and I thought uh, phase one and two is pretty good. Just base, I, I ended up basically basing it on the amount of parts. Phase one and two, uh, for the, just like uh, the majority of the frame, is a lot of parts, so that'll be good. So then on Wednesday, uh, We'll add all the truss parts to the frame and see like how like the completed frame looks, and then we'll add all the exterior arm on onto it as well too. So, yes, indeed. As I get all the parts out here for our first leg. Also, I've been on the fence about uh, whether I want to include the photo edge parts uh, on the kit for the moment. I think I probably will. I was thinking I was not going to. I was thinking to not include the photo edge parts on the initial just snap build and review uh, just because I am planning on painting the kit right away so I thought it would be a pain to have to try to then remove and restick on the photo edge parts but I actually don't think it's going to be that difficult. I'm sure the adhesive that's used on them is not that strong and just peeling them back off for painting the kit later or I might not even feel like I need to paint peel them off for painting the kit later so I don't know I think it'll be fine to just go ahead and put the photo edge parts on for the review I feel like the photo edge parts are such a cool part of the kit probably would be good uh will you be taking it mostly apart again to paint bishop yes yeah so yeah that's kind of just exactly what I was kind of just on about yes I'll be taking it apart uh, for painting um because of all the open hatch gimmicks on this, there will be quite a lot of frame showing on it. And so... Um, hang on, let's see. Okay, that's the wrong one. This, uh... The inje uh, injection molded... That's not injection. Insert molded, sorry. The insert molded parts for the legs are almost the same, but they are slightly different, so... There is a left and right one. I don't think it probably makes much of a difference, but they are slightly different anyway, so. Um, yeah, I will be taking it apart. Uh, like when I painted with the Perfect Grade Strike before, I didn't have to take apart the frame entirely because most of it would be hidden under the armor. Uh, with this one, I will have to take a lot more of the frame apart, unfortunately, uh, because a lot of the frame will show through the sections uh, that I'm going to have open with open hatches. Uh, but what I'm going to do for that, I'll show you guys later on uh, once the kit is all built and everything and probably like the first uh, work in progress video that I'll do for it is uh, I've talked about this before. I don't know if I ever have shown it in any videos, but basically priming the kit while it's all put together and then taking it apart and doing sanding and then having to prime it again, but basically just giving it a uh, light coat of primer just while it's all put together just to get an idea of what is going to actually show on the kit once it's taken apart, painted, and put back together. You know what parts need to be painted and which don't. So it'll just help me to identify which 
parts of the frame I don't necessarily need to spend a whole lot of time on. If that makes sense. And I'm sure it does. It's a pretty simple concept, I think, but uh, again, I'll, I'll show that I'm sure more in the work in progress video. So, uh, so far, uh, you know, I know people's big concern is with the insert molded frame. So I'll be sure to give you guys plenty of analysis on that on how that's going as we go along. Also, I've seen the comment a couple of times uh, that people are saying that it's basically like a, a big 160 scale RG kit, which uh, I, I see the point. I don't, I think there's so much to this kit that separates that from that. I mean, yeah, if, if you really boil it down, sure, you can say that it's like a, a 160 scale RG. Yeah, I guess, basically. But, I mean, then isn't every RG just a 1 144 scale MG? Or isn't any MG just a 1 100 scale PG? And how how technical you want to get in like defining each grade, because there is some variance to them. Hmm... Mm. Uh, also, I'm not currently decided yet what I'm going to do with the plated parts, if I'm going to leave them plated or maybe strip and repaint any of them, I'm not sure yet. Uh, but let me, I suppose, hang on, as soon as I can get this piece in here, which I'm having a little bit of trouble with at the moment, I think that's not pushed in there all the way, there we go, that's the reason. Uh, so far, I mean, I've only put a couple pieces together yet, but I get the feeling that the construction of this, I mean, I, I get the feeling at the moment that I'm going to sail through this because it just seems really nicely and simply construction. The construction seems really nice and simple so far. Uh, is how I'm understanding it. Um, but I will also, I want to say some hellos. I haven't done that quite yet. So, uh, Arrington ow, asking how the build's coming along. As I just mentioned, the build so, so far, I mean, I've just barely started, but it's coming along well. I'm just kind of working the insert molded frame a little bit here. And I pinched my finger a little bit. Um, but also, let's see, on Facebook, we got Jason. Hey Jason, on uh, Twitch we got Alvin, Rodri, uh, as you, you you all say hello to so I can see your names there. I know some people commented already that I'm just not seeing in the comment uh, chat at the moment here. So uh, Wicca on Twitch there, hello as well on f um, YouTube, Geek Eric, Luke, Michael, uh, Darren, James Tars, Ragey, okay, now that's too fast, now I can't read the name, so again. Uh, also, I wanted to check Tars's question here. Uh, is the kit redesigned with modern parts or just a repackage of the old PG? Sorry, sorry. It's not even close to the PG Erickson. It's totally new, yeah. Completely redesigned, nothing to do. The only thing that's recycled from the old kit is the beam saber effect parts. Uh, let's see, Keep TV, our ribbon. Uh, sorry, I don't know how to, I'm supposed to read that. Taman, hello. Uh, what Gundam kit of 2021 are you most excited about? Probably the MG Mark V, just off the top of my head. But there's a lot of really cool stuff coming out. Uh, J.H. Mallet, Vincent Kezki. Uh, again, I'm probably mispronouncing that on Twitch. Sorry about that if I am. Uh, Andrew, Eugene, Roberto, Tony. Hey, guys. Flair, Gundam in the window. Uh, George, what's this Pongers thing? I've seen that and like, I feel like it's something I, some goofy meme that I just don't know about. Need to start watching PewDiePie again. Uh, Hank Hill, I don't know how the giveaway works, but honestly, I just like to watch your videos. Oh, no giveaway this time. Sorry, Hank. <laughs> no giveaway today. Uh, let's see. 
Hendra, hello. Uh, off topic, are you planning on building the Sandrock Armadillo unit? Kyle, no, not planning on building that uh, Sandrock kit. Sorry to say. Uh, Deshevster, what's going on? Uh, Papa Midnight, hello from Florida. Hello to Florida. Uh, Mark, Rev Limit. Uh, let's see. Uh, Siege, Kong Meng. Hello, what's your Discord? Kong Meng, my Discord is a, uh, it's part of my Patreon perks. So if you want, if you're interested in becoming a Patreon supporter, that's how you get access to the Discord. So you can check that out. It's just Zach Aurelius on uh, Patreon, as with everywhere else. Uh, Dylan, Meliodos, uh, okay, let's see, Cybernetic Phoenix, the rookie, said, I built the Zaku 2 perfect grade from 1999 and had some issues building it. The power tube spring got messed up and the spring was trimmed about an inch. Had to drill through the ankle joint. Yeah, I've never built the old Zaku perfect grade, but I imagine it's not the best build. It's pretty dated, of course. Uh, USA Gundam Store, uh, word mark. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, sorry. Thank you to Chefster for clearing that up. Yes, I do still have the uh, wrong banner on there, don't I? Let me fix that. Thank you for the reminder. Um, I want to turn that one off and that one back on. There you go. All right. Thank you for the heads up on that. Uh, okay. Let me get back to it, but um, no, close that. Uh, yes. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. I got it. Save. Oh, uh, I to... no. There we go. It's YouTube being weird again. Every seems like every time you stream, they change something. All right. Now we're back in business. Get back to work on this guy. Uh, and again, guys, if you have questions and stuff along the way, just uh, tag me in your questions so I can pick it out in the chat easier. Um, or you know, can put it in all caps if you want. Just to don't abuse that too much, spamming the chat with too much caps lock. I'll try to keep up with any of your guys' questions, of course, uh, but I, I might miss it if I'm building something, obviously. Uh, hope you had a good holiday, Zach. Thank you. Thank you, Cybernetic Phoenix. I did. Uh, if you missed my live stream last night with Josh, we mentioned that a little bit. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I had a uh, pretty... Uh, laid back holiday, I think, as probably a lot of people did because of the uh, current world situation. Probably a little bit. I mean, I guess the, on the plus side, it was probably, you know, Christmas is usually a lot of people say that Christmas is a very stressful time of the year. So, I mean, I guess it was probably also very stressful for some people. But I mean, I think maybe the the inability to travel to see family and stuff like that, I think that aspect of it could at least be some silver lining to that could be the, that stressful aspect of the holidays maybe it was missing uh, for some people so that's maybe something good i guess to to consider and why is this part not fitting on here oh um it says to put this side on first i don't really think that it would make a difference but because it was not really fitting on there properly i'll I guess i'll just follow the instructions put that side on there first uh, but yeah, my holiday was pretty simple. Uh, um, didn't get uh, much. I uh, got some socks, actually. So I told my wife that uh, my feet are always cold. So she got me some new warm socks. And actually, like, a little a little space heater. Because I have a heater here in my office, but still my feet are always cold. So she got me, like, this space heater to go, like, under the table to, like, put it directly on my feet. Uh, I haven't brought it into the office though yet, so uh, we'll do that. Mm, uh, 
said, wait, you want to repaint this? What color scheme? Oh, yeah, uh, thank you for asking. I did mention this in the unboxing. I, I said that I wanted to do the rollout color scheme, and uh, I think a couple people were confused with the like all yellow rollout color scheme of the Origins version. I think like, the local type rollout color is all yellow. Uh, this is the one that I'm doing. I, I brought this here, and I realized I haven't done a review video on this magazine yet. I bought this months ago, I think like uh, in February or something, I think when I went to Chile, I bought this uh, before I got on the, on the plane, if I remember correctly. Uh, this uh, custom build, you guys may have seen it around, it's this custom build of the ones, the, the old, old, not perfect grade, just 160 scale Gundam custom build by Matt Matt. Uh, and so I want to do, this is the old, like original rollout color scheme. And so uh, basically we'll be basing my build a lot on this one here. So yeah, I'll do it. Now that I'm actually working on this kit and basing it off that, I need to get around to doing a video on that magazine. So, uh, all right, let me see a couple other questions here. Did you find the lost part? Silver Wolf, no, I did not find the lost part. And, um, it turns out that I'm not the only one that has found that the kit was missing parts. So yeah, thank, thank you for also reminding me about that. I'm missing a part on my kit and apparently I'm not the only one. So I am getting a replacement part. Uh, so that will be coming, I don't know when, but unfortunately I'm missing one of these parts uh, for the ankle armor, the inner frame part for the ankle armor, I'm missing one. So uh, that's, that's a shame. It's the kind of thing that like I hear about sometimes and like any like honestly anytime I hear someone say that like I'm missing a part, I'm always thinking like they probably just misplaced the part. Sometimes the part falls off in the bag and you just take the runners out and you toss the bag and you don't realize there was a part in there, you accidentally throw it out or it fell on the floor or behind the desk or something. I just kinda of chalked it up to that never happens with Bandai. They never actually have missing parts, people just lose it. But it did happen to me. And you know, I, it could be, you know, there is still a small chance that I misplaced it somewhere, but I'm usually pretty careful about that. And I checked and double checked, and I didn't throw anything away yet. And I checked all the runner bags and there's nothing in the bags and there's nothing anywhere around here on my floor. And it's not that small of a piece. Like I would be able to find that pretty easily. So I, as far as I can tell, it was never in the bag in the first place. So there you go. Uh, Ghost Gundam asks, what do you think about Gundam Stop animations? It's not, I mean, it's it's cool. It's not something I would ever want to make. And it's not something that I like uh, spend a lot of time watching on YouTube, but I'll, I, I watch a, I watch it from time to time if I see it come up. Uh, Kasval said, if I think Alclad 2 lacquer flat coat and I brush it on my, uh, okay, sorry, a bit of a odd wording there for the question, but I think you're asking if you can if you can brush on Alclad to lacquer flat coat uh, because your compressor is broken so you can't airbrush it. I would not advise that. Um, I don't know if it can be done in a good way. I imagine like it probably can be done, but I, would, I wouldn't want to try unless I mean you try on a spare part or something like that to test it out. Um, yo, Hasaki, what's going on? Let me see a couple other questions here. I just wanted to check out. Uh, I've got a general question. Do you have a certain technique for cutting and cleaning thruster bells, uh, other round parts? Uh, Jason, not particularly, uh, just carefully. Basically, I I handle those kind of nubs basically the same as with everything else. Uh, so uh, yeah, just cutting it off the nippers and then cutting it down with a knife and then just sanding it a little bit with a, a soft type sanding stick. So it's like a little bit spongy. That's it's good for those rounded curved parts like that. Uh, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but how many layers does the perfect grade have? Uh, Luke Harrington, this kit. I mean, technically, it's got. If you count like just the insert molded frame as like the base frame, even though it's not a full frame at that point. I mean, let me see. It's got kind of like four layers to it, sort of. Three or four, kind of like that. Mm. 
Is it possible to candy paint with spray cans? Air compressor are too expensive. Um, yeah, I would assume it's kind of possible you wouldn't be able to get uh, as good results, uh, I'm sure. But, I mean, you could get like a, some, I don't know, I'm sure there's like some nice like candy metallic kind of spray uh, can paints that are basically for like uh, cars that you could try using on, on Gundam stuff. Wouldn't, again, not really the best option. Uh, it's not something that I, I would bother doing. I think uh, your best bet is if that's the kind of painting that you're interested in doing is just to get invested into an airbrush. You're just gonna be able to get much better results and you're gonna have a much better time doing it, I think. Uh, are you planning to paint the metal parts or inner frame? Uh, John Chan, I think you mean like the plated parts basically. And yeah, I mentioned a little bit earlier that uh, I'm not sure about that yet, I think. We'll probably repaint uh, almost everything, uh, but at the moment, I'm not 100% decided on that. It's the kind of thing I need to finish building the kit first and kind of get a feel for it and see like how much of those parts are going to show and if I like like the color of them or if I think I would like them in a different color, then uh, I'll be able to decide which way I want to go with that. Well, but for now, I mean, just leaving everything, just building it all as is, of course, just for the review, so. Uh, I got this little guy here. Uh, Brian L., thank you for the super chat there. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Merry Christmas to you, too. I appreciate that. That'll be a nice little coffee money there for me. Much appreciated. Certainly, like, uh, there's only a couple days left of the year, and I'm trying to trying to finish like a few different projects. Um, I'm well. The, the the big things that I'm tr focusing on trying to finish over the next couple days is uh, the MG wing. And last night I got all the base colors painted on that, so today I'm going to be working on just getting the, uh, getting some gloss coat put on it, and uh, maybe tonight work on start working on the panel lining. Hopefully tomorrow, basically finish up the panel lining and start working on the details, uh, decals tomorrow. Um, but aside from the MG wing, the other thing that I'm trying to finish by the end of the year is a. Uh, uh, build that I'm doing for the Gundam Builders uh, America Facebook group contest uh, or HD Origin kits. I've got the kits all done and I'm basically working on the base for it. And even though the contest is uh, not for dioramas, uh, the base that I'm doing is not necessarily exactly a diorama. It's kind of more of a vignette. Uh, it's a very simple diorama, I guess I should say. But it's it's my first time ever doing like any sort of like uh, actual ground texture diorama, like uh, earth, I guess that's a natural diorama. I've done like some little like small little diorama or vignettes before. Uh, why is that like doing that? Uh, where it was like uh, inside a hangar or something like that. But I've never done uh, one, an outdoor one. So it's my first time doing that. And so uh, the kits are already done. So I mean, like, if I don't finish the diorama, then it's fine. I can basically just photograph just the kits as they are and just have those be my entry. And it's not the, it's not the, a kind of thing that I'm, like, really putting like my, my best effort, like, ever. It's not like a GBWC something that I'm super focused on, like trying to win. It's just a fun contest that I just wanted to enter, just because I basically just felt like painting uh, some origin kits. I'm doing a set of two of them for this. And so, you know, it's I'm not like uh, necessarily trying to win the contest, but just having fun painting a couple of kits and wanted to do a little, put them into a little diorama. It's basically 
basically all it is for that. Uh, Hasaki, you said you're also entering in that as well too? Yeah? I just saw that briefly come up there in the chat. I think you need assistance to do all the sanding number. Uh, yeah, Greek Eric, uh, not Greek, Geek Eric, yes, uh, assistant. Uh, assistant, yeah, would be great, definitely. Alex asked me if, uh, oh, that's why that's not fitting on there, it's the wrong one. The ones for the knees and the ankles look the same, but they're slightly different. Little gold parts here. Slightly different in size. Oh, and I've got the wrong ones here. Oh. Well, um, yeah, Alex asked me if I wanted an assistant to help with the editing. And uh, I said, uh, yeah, maybe. Doing like, uh, yeah, the prep work and stuff on kits, that would be, that would be great. Because I would have a harder time like handing off the reins like to someone to do the editing for me because like that's a part of the creative process that I would, yeah just like have a harder time being hands off on that aspect aspect of it. Mm. Um, hang on, sorry. Uh, but like prep work and stuff, I mean, that's just busy work basically. So that'd be easier to hand off to let someone else do if I could. But the problem is uh, proximity. Alex doesn't live near me. Uh, Lord Kilmore with a really interesting comment there. I agree. It's, he said it's kind of interesting how they managed to take the RX-78-2 and do it in so many different ways and still make a bunch of granddaddy kits, but they all still... Uh, feel nice to build. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I've built four different 1 on 44 scale versions over the past year. And now this one, I mean, and I'm talking like built and painted too. So uh, yeah, I agree. It is pretty cool. It just goes to show how like a uh, classic the design is that they can keep making it and I mean, there's people who are just going to be hardcore fans of the RX-78 too, and like, I like the RX-78 too, but if there was a particular design that I wasn't that into, like the new Walking Gundam, for example, I'm not planning on building any kit version of that, because I don't like the design. But... So long as I like the design, I'll still enjoy building RX-78 twos. Uh, Sir Robert, how long do you think this stream will be? Um, I'm not sure, kind of based on how it's going, it's probably a couple hours, but we'll see. Let's put these photo edge parts on here because, uh, the, yeah, I think like later, I don't know if I'm going to want to take off the photo edge parts or not because there is some detail underneath there that the photo edge part is going to be covering, but it's like uh, detail, then covering that up with more detail, and then covering that up with this part on there as well too. So. It's gonna be very hardly noticeable. So let's go ahead and get this on here. I think maybe using a knife to peel this up will maybe be a little bit easier even. The green side should be on the back, right? Yeah, that's the adhesive side. A good knife will be better. It's not the adhesive side, is it? Oops. I had it backwards. Oh, I should have known because the text is on here on the front side, so duh. 
Oops. So does that side not peel up though? I feel like that's oh, okay. It does, but I don't know. That's weird. I probably should check the instructions on how I'm supposed to be handling this parts. Because I feel like I'm probably doing it wrong. It's stuck to the green backside, but the adhesive side is the side facing up. So. Hang on, I'll check the manual. I'm sure someone's telling me in the chat at the moment, but sorry, I can't look quite yet. Hang on. So there you go. You guys can see that's in there, but then you're going to cover it up with this piece. And you can still see it up inside there, but not that much. There you go. Kind of just barely. Uh, that's just weird. You can't pull the green side off, so the clear sheet pulls off and it's adhesive face up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, Jason having a... The same confusion as me, it seems like. Let's see. I know that there was a there was a whole explanation in here at the start that explained how to do those. Oh yeah. Uh so yeah, there yeah, just the manual it says the Oh, it says to remove the uh, metallic plate here. Okay. Oh well, okay. That makes sense, I guess. So it says to take off the clear part, then remove the metallic plate, uh, which is like the main piece, so just go ahead and take that off. Okay. Then that uh, kind of removes your numbering for that. So you have this sheet separate, which you'll just not use, and then to just stick the protective sheet back on there just because, yeah, your adhesive is facing up now, so just stick that back on there and then just keep it like that for peeling them up later. So this is, uh, this like has the numbers, but you don't really necessarily need the numbers. I mean, it's pretty obvious to tell which parts you need in the manual. So anyway, that's kind of interesting. Now oh, let's go ahead and just put these last couple parts on here and our one leg is done. So yeah, I mean, as far as perfect grades go, it does seem pretty simple in the construction, which is not a bad thing. Overly complicated, it does not necessarily make it good, but yeah, I'm missing this part there for the ankle armor, unfortunately, so that's gonna be a shame. I might be missing part of its ankle armor. Uh, just kind of testing out the uh, frame, and I mean, like the insert molded frame there, the RG style frame bit inside, uh, feels pretty solid. And the question is, how does it uh, hold up over time? We'll have to see, but it feels solid enough as far as I can tell so far. So there you go. Uh, Zach, I've always wondered why your camera frames are so low on your main frame. Doesn't seem too smooth. Uh, Chris, uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, um, Maybe it's some setting of mine that's not good, or just the internet's not that good. I'm plugged uh, I'm plugged into the internet, I'm not using a Wi-Fi. So, I mean, I don't know. If you have any uh, better ideas as to why that's the case, feel free to shoot them my way. Mm, but, I, I, I don't really know. Uh, Wicca said Twitch is better, so it could just be a YouTube thing as well, too. Even though, I mean, plenty of people stream on YouTube and uh, probably have better looking videos, so I don't know. I'm missing a part of the box. It was not on the runner in the bag. How do I get a replacement part? Kirito, there you go. There's someone else who was missing a part, uh, Kirito said. Um, contact whoever you bought the kit from. Would be the best bet. That's how I'm getting mine. Uh, did you build the PGXia one? Yes, I did. I'm pretty sure I live built that one as well too. At least uh, part of.
part of it? I don't remember, but... Uh, Zach, as you build this, how easy do you think it will be to take apart and paint when it's uh, with the remolded parts? Uh, Sean, I mean, as far as I can tell so far, I don't think it's going to be an issue to take this apart for repainting it later. Seems like uh, it's going to be totally fine. Zach, as you build this, how easy... Oh, okay, sorry, I just read that. <laughs> How's it going building the PG Zaku while watching the stream? Ah, there you go. You look tired? Ah, uh, yeah, I am a little bit tired. Yep. That's true. Uh, had the uh, live stream with Josh last night, and then after the stream I was painting the MG Wing kit. So... Yeah, I'm feeling it. A bit tired. Not that I'm gonna like fall asleep here, but yeah. Alright. Mm -hmm. uh, where are we? Zach, is the original RG or our PG RX 782 a good entry kit? I think is what that said, right? I think I lost it in the chat. Uh, a good entry to BG, the original PG RX 78. Um, Gundam Jr., I mean, not necessarily. Uh, you don't necessarily have to go back that far to build your first PG. I mean, if you've built other kits, other MGs, HGs, anything really, you, you can build an eight, you can build a perfect grade, it's not that complicated. It's just more parts, so just go for it. Mm. Trying to bend the frame here a little bit. Give it a give it a good little bend ahead of time. Um, best way to watch your streams. What membership is best for you? Uh, Ra eighty two hundred. What membership is best for you? I mean, I don't have a membership, so uh, yeah, you don't need that. But the best way to watch the stream, I mean, uh, seems to be that uh, people say it's better on Twitch, so maybe on there. Hey Zach, what's your favorite gimmick a Gundam kit can have? Mm, my favorite gimmick that a Gundam kit can have would be uh, the inclusion of water slide decals, probably. If you consider that a gimmick. Uh, that's always something that gets me excited about a kit. Other than that, I mean, I don't really care too much about gimmicks. I just want the kit to look good. So anything that helps the kit to look cool, then I'm into it. Whoop. Uh, where's that? Uh, that's interesting. Uh, yeah, did I put that together wrong or something? I feel like that shouldn't be popping out of there like that. Right? 
Oh, because this will be uh, stabilized later. That's kind of weird. How the the frame has this this point where the frame bends uh, here, but that is not actually used for any articulation. Because if that were the case, then this piston part wouldn't work properly. So that's odd. But uh, all right, let's see here. Then. Uh, These parts go on there. Um, where's the other one? Well, skip that for the moment. So I can't find the part that I'm looking for. We'll just do this one on here first. There it is. I uh, like the stream, just finished my RG Crossbone before I watched this minutes ago. Keep it up. Oh, thank you. RG Crossbone was a fun build. Very teeny tiny, but you gotta love the Crossbone. Uh, I'm sure I've mentioned this before, but the Crossbone is always a weird one for me. Like, it's, it's a cool design that I like, but at the same time, I also, I'm like also like not that into it. Like if I think of like usual like Gundam designs that I'm really like uh, usually into, I don't know. Uh, the crossbone doesn't really come to mind, but I mean, whenever I build one, I always enjoy the build. They're always fun kits to build because uh, very gimmicky. Oh, speaking of gimmicks, <laughs> I mean, like they have a lot of cool parts. Uh, like all the different weapons and things they have, the, the knife feet and the the screw whip thing in the front skirts and all that is all uh, it's all pretty cool. It makes them fun kits to to play around with. Any tips for straight building the MG EX Unicorn? Avery said, um, "No, not really." It's all good. Oh, that should be here. Like that. The MGX Unicorn, I mean, uh, yeah, just be careful with the LED sheet is all, really. Oh shoot. That should be there. And this is part right here. Ah. That satisfying click. Then on the underside. This part goes on the back. This one on the front. And that's all there is to that. I mean, I don't know, I'd have to think about it a little bit more to be sure, but it feels like I missed something. Damn. <laughs> uh, that's why I got my part separator on hand. I knew that was bound to happen, and I knew every time I end up needing my part separator, and it's over there. But I was ready this time. I knew I was going to need that. I forgot to put these parts on here. There you go. That part really only would have sh only shows when you 
you bend the knee and it's like the inside part of the frame there but if you don't have that bend it's tucked up in there and you would never know if it was there or not I guess but um, yeah I don't know the it seems like with other perfect grades that I built like they they I don't want to say overcomplicate but they overcomplicate the frame the frame is especially more complicated just because the, there seems to be like this expectation that it's a perfect grade so it's got to be so complicated but with this one is, does seem like they just kind of simplified it a little bit which again for me as long as it looks good that's the only thing that I'm really concerned about and I mean it looks great so if it's just a little bit simpler construction I think then yeah why not uh, but it does feel like a little bit more simpler than the usual perfect grade at least is kind of my initial feeling of, of this so far. If I can get this piece up in there. I feel like... Uh, when was this? Oh, okay, well. Uh, let's see, if you're putting it in and your PC has RGB, then uh, what? Okay. Um, didn't they make a PG Gundam before? Yes, this is certainly not the first Perfect Grade Arc 72. Alright. Uh, got the RG new Gundam with funnel effects for Christmas. Any tips? Uh, Space Rat? No. Not really any tips for that either, just uh, be careful with the fin funnel connections. But other than that, just have fun with it. Because it's just little tiny parts that uh, connect the fin funnels together, so I just want to be a little bit cautious with those. Oh yeah, taking off the, the main metal piece, taking this out ahead of time does definitely make it easier to peel these off out of there, so. Guess that was a good call. There you go, that's all there is to it, just stick it down. And your kit already looks better, already looks pro level with that little bit of shiny chrome inside the vent there. So there we go. There's the leg frames, minus the one piece that I'm missing there for the ankle armor, but there's that. Let's see, the next part of the build will be the waist. So, I mean, the heavy build it kind of, uh, kind of similar to how RGs typically go, like from the feet up. Uh, in this case, we're not exactly building the feet first, but we are building the legs first and then working our way up, so. Moving on to the waist, then. Uh, yep. And let's see. This says that there's some stickers used for the waist frame as well too, but I don't think I'll be using those. Let me see. Oh. <sighs> They're not even shiny stickers too, so that's silly. 24 and 25. Um, it's a couple of caution markings. A couple of caution marking stickers that you're supposed to use like on the frame inside the waist here, but yeah, not gonna do that, so. No, thank you. Pass. I'll put a couple of the sticker, like marking stickers on the outside armor just to show you guys in the review, but other than that. Uh, John Fisher, it's not a matter of finding it because I'm pretty sure it's not here, the missing part. Uh, 
So yeah, I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but yeah, I should be getting a replacement part. I just hope that it comes ASAP. You know what I mean? Now, as for the polycaps, the kit only has uh, just not that many polycaps, really only a few, and most of them are in the uh, hip section. It's kind of where everything all gets plugged in together. Polycap here, polycap there. Close that up. Uh, PG Unleashed cat bark a ankle if you don't got one. Huh? If you leave caution stickers off, veterans, Federation maintenance workers could be hurt during their repair work. Ah, uh, that's true. I guess I should try to think of the workers. Ah, uh, what can I say? I'm a monster. No respect for the people actually keeping the machines in proper working order, eh? Let's see. That goes in there. That's the right piece there, right? Yeah. In there like that. It's kind of weird. But okay. I think that's the part for... What exactly? I'm not sure. Um, this one goes here. That one there. Okay. Uh, then these. Polycap over here. And the polycap. Yep. In there. up all the way. Quee! There you go. Well, close enough. I got a little bit of a gap there. It's not wanting to close up. There we go. Very tight. Fair enough. Then this one here over the top of that. And this gold piece. Interestingly, right here. There you go. So I'm not sure if that gold piece is going to actually show or not, but that's there. Uh, and then, at this point, we're meant to plug the legs on, so I guess we'll go ahead and do that. Just following the manual, and also this part here up into the top of there. Like that, leaving kind of a odd gap, but there we go. So it's kind of our lower half. We still have some more to do with these uh, skirt frame parts as well too. Uh, no stickers, then you will get into a world of OSHA violations. Oh no. Times two. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, this 
one. There's parts that look alike or look the same, but they're not quite the same. So I'm just trying to make sure I've got the right ones here. That goes like that. That there. Okay, and then close that up. That looks weird. But okay. And then that goes into the back side of this part. It looks a bit weird, but I'm just assuming that it's right. Like that, and like that. So how's that gonna work? I'm just trying to see how this is going to... So I can tell this is for the open hatch gimmick. but just trying to get an idea of how this is going to work actually. Hmm. I don't know. I guess that's right, but how is that going to open up? Don't know. We'll see. What does that look like? I just want to check to make sure that that looks right. Mm, yep. Okay, fair enough. That's those. They do kind of the same thing, but opposite. Over here with that part facing down. Close that around the back side of there. Put that onto here. And same thing here. That side facing down. Close that around the back. I close that around the back, pop it onto here. So the frame of the front and back skirts is the same, but uh, oops, it's not in there, right? There we go. Uh, but I don't think that the armor is exactly the same for the front and back skirts, is it? Uh, maybe it is. Uh, how's the build so far? Uh, Mike Wazowski <laughs> is good. It's very cool so far. Nothing really, I mean, it's about what I expected. But, uh, fun. I'm enjoying it. Let's see. And turn these all upward. Uh, uh there we go. Not sure if there is a specific top and bottom side. They look the same as far as I can tell, but probably I'll end up putting it on and realizing that I was wrong. And there is a specific top and bottom side and I'm doing something wrong. But fingers crossed. Um, this one. Like that. This one there. Okay. Then we can add our skirt armor. So at this point, oh yeah, there is a, there is side skirt armor as well too. So you pop that on, fold it down, pop that on, fold it down. Side skirt, uh, the inner frame for the side skirt armor is just the one piece here. So that's easy. Just pop that on, put it down like that. Then these sections should fit onto the side here so the whole structure for holding the frame armor just plugs onto the side of the hips which is pretty unique that's different and yeah these parts do appear to be symmetrical so should be fine. Ow. 
Turning these is a little bit tough on the hands, though, I'll admit. Uh, so this side should be like that. This one here and down. This one here and down. And this one here and down. Slot that onto there. Good to go. There we go. There's our lower half. All done. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, the articulation for those side skirts does uh, seem pretty nice. You've got, they're on a hinge, like kind of normal, and then that's attached onto there via ball joint. And then that whole section of frame will kind of move. Seems like it's not really going to move that well. It's going to be kind of tight, but that will hold like a kind of like bend to the front or the back a little bit so if you wanted to have the whole skirt armor a little bit kind of more out of the way to have this leg raised up you can kind of rotate all the skirt armor back a little bit kind of out of the way it's kind of interesting and i want to while we're here i want to bend that a couple times to kind of loosen that up so that when i'm trying to do it later i'm not uh having stuff being too tight so you're trying to move stuff like that and the articulation is too tight then like it's going to be stressful and armor parts are going to be popping off and stuff like that so loosen that up a little bit ahead of time it's not going to be becoming too loose that you know it's going to be too loose but anyway there you go so the next part is the chest frame so yeah we're just continuing on up onward and upward through the construction here, building the core block, not first. I would assume we build like the core block first, but it looks like not the case actually. Uh, what do you think the chances are of this frame being used for other PGs? Um, probably not used for anything other than just the variants of this kit. Like they could definitely uh, make like a Crossvals Gundam or a G3 color version. I would assume that Probably one of, if not both of those, will probably happen at some point. Um, I don't know, you know, for sure if and when those are going to happen. We already have the clear color version coming out. Basically, it's just the, you just buy the alternate armor to make a clear color version. Um, after that, yeah, I can assume we'll probably have some other different color variation. But as far as this frame being used like for like a Gundam Mark II or something like that, uh, probably not. Because I don't think that, I mean, I guess aspects of it could be reused, like the, like the insert molded frame uh, could be reused, yeah, for a, a perfect grade unleashed gym, yeah, <laughs> it seems far-fetched, but, I mean, it's possible it could be used for that. Uh, it could be used for a perfect grade Mark II, I suppose, like the, the insert molded frame parts, but, um, hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't expect that the frame will be reused for anything other than RX-782, but, Ooh, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, can I get a wrench? Been building for 15 plus years and I'm huge on sharing experience. Uh, yeah, new type. Yes. Can I get a wrench? I don't know what you mean by can you get a wrench though. Like you want me to give you a wrench? I'm a bit confused by that comment. Uh, the If the RG-like leg interframe works well with the PG Unleashed, do you think they might bring it to the MG lines? I mean, they already have done it with, I mean, they did it on the MG line uh, first, I think, right? With the, uh, with the 1.5, was the 1.5? I think that had it right. I think the, the MG 1.5 Gundam was the first to use that insert molding, if I remember correctly, right? So they've already done that in the in the Master Grade line years ago. If they will start doing it again more in the future, uh, I wouldn't really expect to see that. I think they're doing it here in the Perfect Grade line because this is like a special exemption where they're just doing... It's just like a, a special one-off thing. I wouldn't expect it to see it more in future... M PG kits, and I wouldn't necessarily expect it to see it in MG kits either. I think it's just kind of 
something they wanted to try for this particular kit and uh, probably we'll just continue to only see that mostly just in the RG line in the future I would say. Uh, did you order the MD Tamamo or did you miss it like me? I don't know what the MD Tamamo is so sorry. Uh, is the USA Gundam store Nipper worth buying for an MG? Yeah, it's worth buying for anything. Uh, I'm still using the 1.0 Nippers from USA Gundam store. I don't ha I don't have the 2.0 Nippers yet, actually. But I'm still using the 1.0 ones, and they work great. So I can assume the 2.0 ones are also good. Uh, any And anyone get an airbrush for Christmas? Uh, no, I did not get an airbrush for Christmas or anything model kit related. Uh, let's see. Uh, are the are there any compressors that are quiet enough that you could have running without waking someone up in the next room? I mean, it depends on how light a sleeper the person is, and depending on how thick the walls are. I mean, it's kind of hard to answer that, but uh, you can get compressors that are slightly quieter. Uh, let's see. Huh. Uh, I just use generic nippers and they work fine. Yes, the generic workers nippers work fine. Yeah, you don't necessarily need any particular god hand nippers or USA Gundam store nippers or anything. You don't you don't need to get the best cut. But if you're asking if the USA Gundam store nippers work well, yes, they work well. Uh, can you get perfectly fine results with? something that costs five dollars or even less yeah sure can you get good results with nippers that cost eighty dollars from god hand or something like that yeah it's all in how you use the tools really uh zach i've been curious to ask how do you feel about hand painting an entire kit and do you think it's an inferior aesthetic to an airbrush kit uh, best wishes from Austria. Uh, Michael, hand brushing a kit, I mean, it depends on what you're going for. You can get like, if you, and it depends on if you're what you're talking about. If you're talking about Gumpla, most people don't hand paint, uh, sure, but you can do it and get good results, yes. Um, I've just been painting up the uh, Kuster, my machine career Kuster kit is all hand painted, but that's Machine Krieger, so it has like a kind of different aesthetic, and also it's in a completely different scale. It's in 120 scale, so uh, it's just different. Uh, and like the way you would be doing that is different, and you wouldn't necessarily... I think mo most people who hand paint Gumpla probably are doing that with acrylic paints, not lacquer paints, which is kind of the norm for Machine Krieger. So depending on the look you're going for and like yeah, exactly how you want to do it. If you want it to be a really clean, uh, like sharp looking Gumpla build, then you're probably going to want to use uh, acrylic paints for that, probably. Uh, and yeah, it can be done. Uh, you know, depending on the look you're going for, though, airbrush is probably going to be the easier way to go. But there you go. Uh, yeah, no problem. Isn't Machine Krieger a steampunk World War One or World War Two kits? Yeah, basically, kind of. It's sort of, I mean, like, in a very boiled down uh, description, you could say yes. It's kind of like steampunk. I mean, I mean, World War One or World War Two? No, not necessarily. I mean, just. Maybe in kind of generally the way that they're weathered, because they're usually weathered and painted in a way similar to like how uh, aircraft or uh, armor from like real world uh, examples are done but in terms of like the actual uh, design aesthetic of the kits it's they're I mean totally sci-fi right all right let's get this let's get back to building here with the torso frame so yeah, it's interesting that you do not build in the core fighter first, but I think you do build it separate and they then they fit together, I believe. But uh, oops, 
Sorry about the little camera bash there. Okay, this is the piece I was looking for, and that will fit into there like that. It's kind of an odd little thing. You just kind of loosely drop this part down into there. Okay. Uh, spam bot in Twitch chat. Haven't seen that in a while. Oh, is there? Uh, GN Builder. Right, I'm not seeing that <clears throat> coming up, but. Uh, <clears throat> if you guys are seeing that on Twitch, let me know and I'll see what I can do about that. Did you see the 86 kit announcement? 86 kits announcement? What's that? Ragey Gamer. 86 kits announcement? Uh, that's like ringing a bell, but. Uh. Oh, new type. You mean the wrench as in a mod? Um, no, it's okay. Thank you for offering, but I don't need any uh, moderator really at the moment. I have a, I have a couple who neither of them are here at the moment. I think, but that's fine. I don't really think I necessarily need a mod most of the time, so it's fine. Uh, so that fits into there, I guess just, oh, that's why it was not fitting there properly. It's a little bit crooked. Come out of there. There we go. But we need to have that ever so slightly out so that this piece, right? Nope, not that one. Uh, which one? Ooh, this one. So that this one can fit down onto there. Like that. Okay, there we go. I was unsure about how that was actually going to fit together, but fortunately it just snapped right into place. Easy peasy. All right, then as for these. We'll go on to here. Uh, 86 is an anime movie or series uh, that has mecha that reminds me of Tachikomas. Uh, Reiji, send me a link on like my, my uh, Facebook page or something like that. It's ringing a bell, but I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if I saw that or not. Uh, if you can, if you're on Facebook, send me a link to my Facebook page or something so I can know what you're talking about. Uh, and let's see, we have a sticker here. Sticker A. This black sticker here for blocking the light on this clear part. Oh, and these foil stickers are uh, different from your average foil stickers. They're the kind of a little bit more substantial, like a little, and they're not rubbery, but what do I want to say? They're like a bit more flexible than your uh, usual foil stickers. That's interesting. Didn't notice that before. Uh, the A6 kits are those spiders with cannons on them. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I do uh, remember that now. Yes, uh, they, they, uh, yes, there was an announcement of two different kits, right? There was a figure eyes, like, figure eyes standard kit of, like, a girl kind of character, right? Uh, looks kind of similar to the one they came out with, uh, the Asuno kit, I think is right. Is the name of the one they came out with uh, earlier this year, if I remember correctly? Looks similar to that. Uh, and then there was the, yeah, the, the spider uh, mecha thing with the big cannon on its back that looks like a like a ball cannon, I thought, when I saw that. Yeah, I'm not familiar with the anime or anything at all, with the source material, but I did see, yes, the announcement of those kits. Yes, now that you mention it, I do know what you're talking about now. Yeah, uh, 
The mecha one looks cool. The girl one, I don't really... Doesn't look that great, in my opinion. Uh, you guys know I do love the... Uh, girl kits, the mecha musume kits, the uh, Megami device and stuff like that. Uh, but that one, I like with the Asano kit that came out earlier this year, I think it was this year, or last year. Uh, I also didn't really like the look of that, so like Bandai's girl kits are usually a uh, pass for me, unless they're the Figurized Labo line. The Figurized Labo kits are fantastic, I love those, but other than that, I mean, I don't know. They've got like someone else who does the design uh, for those kits uh, than whoever does the designs for like the uh, figure standard kits apparently Tamamo is the new Megami device. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yes. Yeah, so you said MD Mama Tamamo. Okay. Yeah, that's MD means Megami device, right? Yes <laughs> uh, Yeah, 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 yeah. I, okay. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, that's like white and uh How it was like the other colors white and like red or gold or something like that green something. Yeah, yeah, that does look cool. Yes, it's like, uh, sort of reminds, it's like a variant of the Nine Tails kit, basically, right? Yeah, it looks cool. Definitely planning on checking that one out, of course. Wouldn't miss that. So here, to plug in the arm shoulder connection parts, you need to rotate this out. Uh, plug this in. Uh, that's the wrong side it looks like I think or oh. rotate that out well that's the right side well wait a minute oh well I was just doing it wrong anyway put that in and then rotate that back there we go kind of built the wrong one first but it's okay uh This is what I wanted to ask. Uh, how do you know which piece is where? Some right and left pieces are the same. How do you cut them off and fix later? I normally cut. Uh, uh, Prashath, uh, yeah, sometimes like the way that I build the kits like this, cutting all the parts off for a particular section, yeah, sometimes uh, there are parts that are specific to the left and right side, but usually as it goes with Bandai kits, they're, they make it pretty foolproof for you. So like, if there is one part that's supposed to be for the left side and you try to put it on the right side, you'll notice that like it doesn't fit right or something like. So even if you, even if you try to put it on the wrong way, it won't work. So they make it pretty easy for you. Or like, the parts are different enough you can tell. Like you can see in the manual, you have to like squint a little bit and look a little bit more closely. But usually you can tell in the manual, you know, if it has like a little notch sticking up on one side and not on the other, you can see which one is right just by looking closely at the manual and so usually that's all it takes it's not that difficult uh, to sort out which parts go where uh, the left and right specific parts that is so there's our kind of top half of the torso there oh, okay and so this uh, I was wondering why this part here in the middle is clear it looks like that middle part is only clear so that the light can go up through there. Because if that was dark, then I think the LED is under here. And the LED uh, would not be able to get the light up into the head. So it's only clear so that light can get up into the head as well. No, the LED actually, no, the LED would be on top of here. So actually, maybe it's so that the light can go down into the cockpit a little bit, maybe? And I guess that's maybe why that part is clear. So you get a little bit of light down into the cockpit. That's pretty cool. I'm not sure about that at this point, but we'll find out here once we get a little bit farther along. Uh, so, let's see. Need this part. It's gonna be for some neck pistons. That's pretty cool. That's gonna go up into the head, it looks like. Uh, hey, Farid. Hey Zach, uh, there is a few color of primer like gray and black, so what condition I should use each one? Yeah, uh, color, primer color is something I, I've talked about uh, quite a bit in different work in progress videos and stuff in the past because it's very important, I think, uh, before you lay your base colors, you need a, a base color of primer first. So I 
These days, I almost always use multiple colors of primer on a kit. It's pretty rare for me to uh, prime an entire kit all in one color. So it just depends on what color the armor is going to be. Uh, I'll just hang on here. So, uh, I mean, it just depends. If you, if you feel like you're doing like your inner frame and it's going to be gray, then probably just a regular gray primer would, would work fine for that. But if you're doing like white armor, and if you spray gray primer on uh, before painting white, you're going to have a harder time. You're going to notice that it's going to take a lot of white paint to really get it looking white because you're having to cover up gray. So it's kind of difficult to spray white on white. It's kind of hard to see what you do. So a lot of times if I'm using white primer, I'll also add something to the primer uh, to make it slightly off white. So just so that it makes it easier to see. So like that's what I did, for example, with the MG wing that I'm currently working on. Uh, I added a tiny drop of purple to the white primer so that the uh, primer color is actually a really super light lavender. And then I'm going over that with just regular white. Uh, let's see. Uh, that's easier. Uh, and then black primer you would obviously use if you're painting really dark colors. Uh, like if you, or uh, metallic colors or something like that, you want a, a black base is better for that. So there we go. We're not putting the LED in yet. I guess we put the LED in later. Okay, fair enough. I wanted to put in in right now today. Hmm. Uh, so yeah, just base the color of your primer. Just to choose the color of your primer based on uh, what color you're going to be painting the armor. Hopefully that helps. But I know the issue for a lot of people is just availability. If you uh, live in an area where you don't have easy availability to different colors of primer because most places you know the most common colors is gray so in a lot of cases the gray might always be might be kind of the only thing you really have much access to uh, and so I mean you can make it work with just gray if that's all you have you know then that's all you have but if you have access to other colors as well too it's good to have some pink primer as well too pink white black uh, have a little bit of everything if you can because I find myself using uh, all the different colors all the time so let's see and like that and how does that fit into there okay Hey, Ian, Henry, thank you for the super chat. I uh, hope you had a good holiday. Any news on the next Gumpla Talk? Uh, no news on the next Gumpla Talk other than the fact that uh, I am hoping and planning to do it, yes, sometime soon. Uh, but I couldn't say exactly when it's going to be yet. But yeah, it is going to happen. Uh, and I did have a good holiday, thank you. So, yes, there will be some more Gumpla Talk, yes. And this one, okay, just goes in there like that and like that. Okay, interesting part of the frame there. As for uh, the other side, like that. This is one of those aspects of the frame where it's a interesting construction. I'm not sure what's. Ah, oh, it's going to be for the uh, art, like uh, ab crunch articulation. Basically, is kind of why that's that how it is. So you can see basically what we've made here is like a little kind of uh, accordion kind of joint there that will slide out. I'm trying to see if you guys can see that. 
So that kind of extends out like that. That's going to be for our yeah, ab crunch, basically. Our extension of the frame there. Interesting. All right, that's cool. Uh, so we put this section together, and then now we can put this onto here. I guess it's maybe easier to illustrate that point now with this part added onto there. But there you go. So that works like that. That's pretty cool. Nice. Uh, thoughts on mixing a blue color with white or gray primer for a gray base color. Yeah, Michael, you can add whatever you want. I mean, uh, primer and paint, is if we're talking lacquers especially, are pretty much the same thing. So yeah, I mean, when I'm talking about adding a little bit of color to the primer. So like I mentioned, uh, adding a little drop of purple into the white primer to make a light lavender color primer. It's just what, it's just paint, just what purple paint I'm talking about. So yeah, you can absolutely uh, adjust the color of your primer by using regular lacquer paint. Yes. That's all there is to it. Easy peasy. So like for the master grade wing, basically like for all the white and blue parts, I did that like a light lavender primer. And then for everything else, uh, I did like a off white primer uh, because uh, the regular like gray primer is pretty light in its color, but I wanted something even lighter. So I added a tiny little bit of uh, just like a gray to white primer to get a really super light gray their primer. Um, Maui asked, what hoodie are you wearing? It's This is a PewDiePie hoodie, the 50, 50 million club. Uh, yeah. These days have not been not been keeping up with PewDiePie much these days, but there was a time. I wasn't a fan for a long time, and then was a fan. Uh, and then you know, when he started doing a, a lot of Minecraft videos, then I kind of stopped watching. And then since then, I have kind of gone back every now and then. I'll watch a video from time to time, but. Since the Minecraft phase, I've not been like a, a daily viewer. A lavender primer, where did you get that from? Uh, didn't, the Knowles, uh, like I said, lavender primer is just white primer with a little drop of purple into it. And I mean a very little drop of purple to it. Uh, purple is really powerful, uh, a really powerful color. So, I mean, I had white primer and just literally a drop of purple into it and you've got like your lavender there already. Uh, so really d don't overdo that. So there's the main torso frame and now we're kind of switching gears to building the core block. So we can set that aside for the moment. And there should be this little tiny piece here. This is pretty cool uh, for the chair, you've got the little uh, fold down, uh, kind of the thing they pull out in front of them for uh, sniping, like the extra camera uh, for sniping, which as I understand it, it's for the camera actually in the gun. So usually like when their pilots in this, in the cockpit and they have all the screens around them, that's for like the head, the cameras that are in the head of the Gundam. Uh, when they pull out the extra little thing kind of like a Star Wars style pull out the extra little camera TV thing that's for the camera that's directly in the gun so I guess it's uh, slightly more accurate with that I suppose which is maybe why you don't see them using that every time sometimes you know they're just shooting without using that uh, it's only I guess when they're wanting that extreme accuracy so they pull that out this is pretty cool too how the front and back halves of this have these like uh, fins there and they slot in between each other 
when you put them together. So you get that really nice uh, fine detail there, which is made up of two separate parts in order to get that. And our chair you can pop into place. That chair, I feel like, going to be a little bit tricky part to get out of there probably later on, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. And the red part underneath there. And these detail parts up inside there. For like the uh, engine details there, which would be on like the back side of the core booster on the bottom side of our core block. And this part. Pull that up. Slot that down onto there like that. Uh, pop in our little Amuro. Amuro figure into there. And so, yeah, it's going to be kind of hard for you guys to see maybe, but with the camera folded up and you can fold that camera down if you want. So it's actually like in front of his face there. That's pretty cool. You can close that up. And that is essentially think all there is to it for our core block so then we go back to the body here and how does this part fit onto there just like that I think yeah is that right that one there uh, does the core block transform Mulambo no it doesn't transform we have a separate a core fighter which we'll build um, not today that'll be in part two of the build. So today we're just building phase one and two of the frame. Uh, and the next live stream is where we'll finish the body and also build the weapons and the core block, or not the core block, the core fighter as the uh, separate thing. So, yes. Hmm. Uh, okay. There's the kind of inner frame part of our hatch. It's what will be the hatch. It doesn't really look much like a hatchet yet, but that's just there. And that part on there. And that folds down like that. Okay. And these chest vent parts. We'll just plug onto there. Easy peasy. Boom, boom. And this one onto the top of there. It's kind of like our secondary color here. It's all the parts that we're adding on now. All the color basically before this step of going back to the, the frame here was all in the, the dark, dark gray. And now we're adding the kind of medium gray parts onto here. So now you're getting that nice two-tone gray look uh, for all these armor parts see here or uh, frame parts I'm just saying, not armor all the frame parts so that goes on to where here there there we go There and there. Close that back up. This piece on the back of here. There you go. So there's the like the torso frame. Say so not a lot of like uh, articulation necessarily in this, other than like that basic aspect of that. I mean the you can see how the cockpit hatch is going to open up basically, but kind of without the actual parts on there, it doesn't really look like much of anything. The neck, you got the nice piston details with the gold and the chrome parts up in there. Moving the neck around. And to attach this, we have to put the core block in first. It says that goes onto there, and then slide that over the top. That should lock down into place there. Tight enough. There you go. Ah, it's looking very cool. Definitely the the little bits of gold and chrome plated parts and everything like poking out uh, definitely do make it look pretty nice. 
Um, so, no more uh, photo etch parts used on that part of the frame so far. Uh, I think the rest of the photo etch parts mostly go on during uh, phase three, which we'll do on Wednesday. So, for now, uh, it says to build the backpack next. And I think we're going to need our metal parts at this stage, yeah. The metal verniers. Very nice and very cold. Ooh. <laughs> They've been here in my room. Uh, all right, so let's see, these parts are very interestingly shaped, but these are just to uh, funnel the light from the beam saber handle down to the thruster bells. So you've got two of these, one going from the left side and one going from the right side. So you could plug the, uh, the light up beam saber handle into either side and it would, uh, this clear part will funnel the light down into the thruster bells there. Uh, we are at the same spot now, <laughs> Greg. Oh, we are, eh? I'm catching up. Well, Alex can tell you that when it comes to speed building, I'm the speediest. But I think, Greg, you're also probably not, uh, not uh, like preparing all the parts ahead of time. You're probably just uh, kind of preparing all the parts as you go along, right? I'd imagine. Uh huh. So these clear parts here for the beam saber connections, and ah. this one on here next. To close that up like that and this part on here which is going to be our part that will that will be our shield connection piece later that we'll be able to rotate and it feels like it's gonna be a hard piece to rotate but maybe later it'll feel easier uh, and then simply Plugging that part into there. I don't really like the fact that this uh, part is clear red. I wish that it was just plain clear so you'd have the option to paint it whatever color you want. I think the clear red looks a little bit ugly in my opinion, to be honest. Um, also, just don't really like the kind of metallic blue for these thruster bells, so I'm not sure if I'll be repainting those or replacing them with something else. I'm not decided yet. It seems kind of a shame not to use the included metal parts, but I just don't really like that metallic blue color necessarily. But that's all there is to the backpack frame for the moment. That just plugs right into there on the back. There you go. Easy. And now arms. So head is going to be last, I guess. Sorry to say. Uh, do you guys nip everything off or nip it when it tells you to nip the parts? But will Zach ever address the very important question of what kind of cookie is best? Huh. <laughs> that is a good question. What kind of cookie is best? Hmm. I don't know. I'm the kind of guy, you know, I never met a cookie I didn't like. Cookie is the kind of thing you'd have to try pretty hard to mess up and have a bad cookie. Uh, also, at, at this point of the construction of just building the frame for the arm, it has you build uh, the closed fists and the open hands. 
the actual uh, weapon holding hands you build later on in the menu, but uh, since we're building hands here, I just have them all here at once. Uh, oatmeal, raisin, or snickerdoodle? Mmm, I mean, both are good. Uh, let's see. Okay, I have to bend this ever so carefully, like that, and this one down, and to the side. Yeah, I mean, between Oatmeal Raisin and Snickerdoodle, I mean, both are great. I might have to go with Oatmeal Raisin just because... You know, snickerdoodles, delicious, but of course just, if you're comparing the two, it's a little bit plain compared to oatmeal raisin, but snickerdoodle is also pretty classic, so and you can't go wrong with either one. If offered, I would always accept either of those cookies. Uh, oatmeal with white chocolate, also good. Yeah, uh, macadamia or uh, anything like that as well too. Also good. Uh, anything with peanut butter is good. Uh, what else? I'm gonna be feeling hungry now. Uh, what are those? Uh, the Thin Mints, right? The Girl Scout cookies, the mint ones. Those are awesome too. Love those. Sorry, it probably looks a bit strange. I'm like doing this looking back and forth, but I got the manual over here. I should probably move the manual a little bit closer, but it's like on the far page. There's a bit of a gap there, but I guess that's probably meant to be like that. Oh, okay, yeah, it does show in the manual that it does look like there's supposed to be a little bit of a gap there. So, okay. Uh, these little gold pistons gonna go down in here uh, what is Zach's opinions on cake uh, cake I like cake well enough I prefer ice cream if I had to choose between the two uh, between cake and cookies I would also probably have to go for cookies I mean cake is good it's fine but uh, cookies you know you have that that ease of just being able to just pop one, pop one in the mouth, and then you know you're on your way. I don't have to sit down and actually cut anything and put something on a plate. You know the whole hassle of eating cake. You don't have that with cookies, which is nice. Uh, are the metal parts undergated? Yes, Alden, all the, uh, well, I mean, for these kind of parts, the gold parts there, there's not really any way to undergate them because the whole thing is like the part. So uh, you will like have some small gate marks on those, but I don't think that they're necessarily gonna be in places that are like showing that much. Gotta add our little metal pieces in here for the magnet connection parts. As well, so let's see. Like that. Here. This side first. And that side. Okay. There's 
that. Uh, gold pieces on here. Uh, Garen, hello from Philly. Hello. Uh, do did you know vanilla ice cream is made of beavers? I did not know that. It's news to me. Just built uh, three MGs over the weekend. R.I.P. My hands. Yeah, I know the feeling. Uh, the inner pre-molded frame. Wonder if they went and did 2.0 RGs redesigning the early to remove the inner frame gimmick. Um, it's an interesting idea if they were to ever do like 2.0 RG kits. Yeah, possibly. Here's another spot where you're meant to put a sticker on the inner frame. Also going to pass on that. A couple ones here. But uh, no, thank you. So let's see. Um, now we're building some hand parts here. Uh, cake is for uncultured heathens, the real ones. No, pie is king, especially pecan pie. Yes, Ian Henry, thank you once again for the super chat. And yes, I can agree. Uh, pie is definitely better than cake. That's That is definitely true yes I think we can all agree on this yes the problem here in Korea is that uh, uh, well there's lots of places to get cake uh, hard getting your hands on pie Basically, other, anything other than pecan pie. Pecan pie is like the only thing that you can ever find here, as far as pies go, uh, without going like up to Seoul. And even in Seoul, there was a pie place that I've been to a few times, but I think last time we tried going there, uh, I think it was it was gone. And of course, it was in Itaewon. If you guys are familiar with uh, Seoul or Korea at all, if you've been here at all, you've probably been to Itaewon. You know what I'm talking about. It's like the the foreigner place, part of Seoul. Um, but yeah, there was a there was a good pie place there that did like all kinds of pies, meat pies, and like that as well too. So it was good. But man, yeah, pie. And we did have a we did have a pie place here in my town as well too. Cause the problem is that I live in like a smaller smaller city so uh, that's why you don't always have access to pie uh, but we did have a pie place but unfortunately I think it's just pie for whatever reason I don't know I have no idea why but uh, for whatever reason pie is not quite uh, that popular and also uh, the location where this restaurant was located was just a terrible location too so it's kind of doomed from the start, unfortunately. Just kind of building these other hands without the manual. You would think it'd be pretty easy, but those hands are actually a little, you know, slightly complex. Yeah, the pie place we had here locally was pretty good. Just uh, not enough demand for it, and the location was bad, so it didn't last that long. The location was terrible. I mean, I really don't know what they were thinking with that location for that place. But even if you knew where it was, you'd have a hard time finding it. Uh, I gotta say, the chrome parts for the inside of the hand is an interesting idea. I don't necessarily, can't necessarily say that I like the look of it. Uh, I mean, it certainly emphasizes the detail on the hands, I suppose, but not that cool looking, to be honest. Let's see how the frame for the shoulder is put together. The shoulder armor. I 
It's basically the same, right? Left and right side should be. Like that. Are regular PG hands compatible with the PG Unleashed wrists? Uh, Michael Dawson, I'm not sure. I Like if you wanted to use the hands from the original RX-78 PG. Um, I would assume even if they don't fit perfectly, it would be pretty easy to modify them to fit. So if you're interested in doing that, I would say probably not going to be that difficult to do. Uh, if they just fit straight out of the box, though I'm not sure I don't have the kit to test it out, so I couldn't say. There you go. It's one arm. I just got the other arm here. Master grade you built over the weekend was the Shadow Gundam, the Gundam, sorry, I lost it in the chat there. Shadow Gundam, what's that? Uh, Gundam Dynamis and Gundam Epion. All right, there you go. Shadow Gundams. Gundam Spiegel. I guess a uh, relatively simple one. But yeah, the other two, yeah, that would take you a little while. around to finishing it let's see built half the easy eight normal grade in one hour i think yeah what do you mean by normal grade high grade uh kyungin hi from korea hello Anyong, if you're Korean. Alright, uh, this one's gonna be that way. And like this. Come on. Uh, let's see, I'm so stoked to start my PGU. Just gotta get through the Vargil I'm working on now. The Vargil was a cool kit. So every time I uh, like go back to my stash closet where I've got the Vargil at the moment, every time I see that kit, I'm always thinking that I'd like to just take it out and just do a simple, quick and easy paint job on that. But uh, maybe one of these days, I'll paint up that kit. It'd be a fun one to paint, I think. Ooh, definitely, uh, oh, no, I didn't. I thought I put those on upside down, but I didn't, did I? Oh, okay. And this one, it's like that. Alright. Uh, could you bake a small pie in a toaster oven or an air fryer? Uh, I imagine so. I don't see why not. I have, that's all we have is like a, not necessarily a toaster oven, it's like a, it's, it's an oven, but it's like a, kind of a step between toaster oven and proper oven, I guess. Uh, but I made banana bread in there yesterday what I was eating at the beginning of the stream. Some banana bread that I made yesterday. Hmm. A little 
Ooh, a nubbin on there that I forgot to take off. I've had a PG XO lighting uh, that a friend got me a couple years ago, and I have an MG Sosby that I got open box. Which should I build first? Sosby looks like a PG with all the parts wise. Yeah, Corey, I mean, uh, yeah, either one. Sosby, I mean, either one of those kits would be a fun build, so um, maybe go for the Sosby first? I don't know. Uh, how advanced to of a builder do you think one has to be to do a good job with the resin conversion kits, Kaya? Um, thinking about getting one for the MGEX. XS. Love Sentinel. Um, as far as resin conversion kits go, I mean, if you've got a fair amount of experience building just regular plastic kits, then you'll probably will be fine. The MG Excess, though, is, I mean, that's a pretty big kit, so that might be a little bit different story. Uh, I'm sure it's probably a bit more complicated than something else. Uh, so that, that particular one might be a little bit more tricky to start off with. Uh, you might want to if you can get like a different conversion kit for maybe a little bit easier kit to start off and then to do I like to try out before working on the excess maybe but I mean if if you're excited about it then go for it you know uh, just you know take your time and go through all the proper steps and everything like that and I'm sure you'll be fine but if you're feeling a little bit nervous then uh, you know maybe try out uh, something easier first. Do you have painting and customization tutorials? Um, yes, yeah, sort of, yeah. Mm -hmm. Got a bunch of different like uh, work in progress videos and some tutorials kind of thing like that as well, but basically I think in my case my work in progress videos sort of serve as uh, tutorials, I guess in a sense, basically just to kind of see what I do and then that can kind of give you ideas on uh, what you might want to do. That's the piece that I'm looking for here is for that. Uh, Zach already live built a few 30 minutes missions. Kits. Yeah, I've, I have built a few 30 minutes missions kits in the past. Um, nothing really new coming out that I can think of offhand. 30 minutes missions that I would be building, live building again, at least anytime soon. Uh, I gotta say, at the moment, the wrists feel a little bit loose. I'm not sure if maybe they're gonna feel a little bit tighter once we're a little bit further along in the build, but at the moment, they feel kind of loose, which is making me a little bit worried. The wrist will be pretty important, at least, for holding up the beam rifle. Uh, how are the ankles on the Faz Verka holding up? Uh, I don't know. I don't have the kit like on display or anything, so I don't know how they're holding up. But I would assume, like with anything, they probably have gotten a little bit weaker over time. I would assume. Just kind of tends to happen. But uh, if you're worried about that, you know, you can tighten up the joints a little bit with some paint or glue or whatever you need to do. And so with this, all we've got left to do for today is just the head frame anyway. I'm not building the full head, right? 
So just a reminder to you guys, if you came in late or missed me talking about this earlier in the stream, uh, today we're just going through uh, basically these steps, phase one and two of the construction. Uh, two days from now will be the second part of the stream where we'll be finishing the frame by adding the truss parts of the arm of the frame on and the remainder of the photo etch parts and I think the LED also goes in during that section as well too, uh, maybe possibly. Uh, and then finishing up the, with all the armor and everything like that on there too, as well as the weapons and stuff. So we'll be finishing up everything in a second part live stream uh, on Wednesday morning. If you guys are living in the US, that's a Tuesday evening for you, two days from now. So just a reminder on that. Um, let's see. What's your favorite older kit? I'm building the MG God Gundam and it's way better than I thought it would be. Yeah, I've uh, Tyler, that's a good question. I've not uh, built that particular kit, but I have built, uh, obviously, fairly recently, just a couple months ago, the Master Grade Spiegel. And I was also pleasantly surprised at uh, how good that kit was, better than I was expecting it to be. So, yeah, uh, I can... Imagine the same could be said for other kits in the line as well, too, right? So, uh, should probably check out the God Gundam at some point as well, too. Uh, okay. Now, it says to put stickers on the cameras, but I'm not going to do that because I feel like, kind of, what's the point of doing that? I'm going to put in the LEDs, so. Stickers would just cover up the light coming out of the LED, which is kind of silly. So if you're planning on using the LED, you can just omit those stickers. I'm not going to need that. So we can just put this on here. And this part here onto this side. Oh, and we need our middle parts again. I'm very nervous about losing these parts. The little metal parts there for the Vulcans in the head. Toss that now. So these will clip into there like that. So I mean, they've got a good fit in here. I think once they're on the kit, I'm not worried about losing them. It's just that like during the painting process, I'll be have to keep careful track of them as to not lose them. Uh, these ones I'm, I'm pretty certain I will not repaint in a different color or anything, so they're probably good as they are. Got this chrome part to go up inside the vents on the side of the face. Very nice. And this poly cap right in there. You can close up the head. Okay, and then just the part here for the eyes will be our last bit. So, for today, that's a wrap. Looks a bit weird without a chin, but there you have it. Phase one and two, all done. Yeah, that's uh, very odd looking, but there you go. And even uh, phase three doesn't fix that either. It doesn't really doesn't grow a chin until the final phase four. Even, I mean, Phase five is technically the final phase, but that's just opening up all the open hatches and stuff. So uh, there you go. That is what we've got so far. It does look very nice. So I am going to record some video of just this uh, like this. So that'll be included in the review, uh, some video coverage. So you guys will be able to see this uh, in more detail and like that during the review video. So I'll get some video of that and talk about uh, the frame kind of so far. And then after we finish the rest of it, then I'll, you know, be able to record the, the main, the rest of the review for it. So 
Uh, the review will probably come at the end of the week, probably Friday, I would assume. Uh, the next live stream build will be on Wednesday, two days from now. So, so yeah, stay tuned for that, guys. Thanks for hanging out today. Uh, if you guys have any other questions, of course, that you want to ask, you know, uh, uh, ask on Wednesday, or you can just send me a, a message or something like that on uh, Facebook or something. If you asked a question about this build, you want to know about it so far that I maybe missed your question or something during the stream. Uh, which kit would you like to see get this treatment next? Uh, Hitokiri uh, for like a perfect grade unleashed. Uh, I mean, I I like the design of the Mark II, but I do sometimes also find it kind of boring. That said, um, the PG Mark II is pretty cool, but it would be cool to see like an updated a 2.0 basically RPG unleashed version of the Mark II, I guess would be cool as well too. Or the GPO one, I think between the two, I'd probably be more excited about the GPO one, I guess. Uh, but I think uh, the Mark II probably needs it more, but I don't know. Uh, all right, guys, so that's it for today. Uh, I will see you again in two days time. And uh, hope you all having a great uh, rest of the day for today or night or wherever you are. Wherever you are. Uh, Bunny Freaks, the PG Unleashed new Gundam. Yeah, that's true. I think uh, they're way past due for making a PG new Gundam. I've said many, many times the new Gundam is not a particular design that I really like all that much. A new Gundam. I, I like it fine, but I'm not that big of a fan of it. Uh, I, that said, I do not understand why they've not made a, a perfect grade new Gundam. So I think, yeah, that's a, that's a good guess if they were going to do another PG Unleashed kit. Or just for the next PG kit in general. I think that uh, uh, it's way past time we should have had a, a PG new Gundam, I think, at this point. So it's still very possible. We got the metal structure, though, so I think they kind of put all their eggs into that basket. I don't know. We'll see. All right, guys. I'll see you later. Bye.